So there are three things we need to keep in mind to fix and avoid banding in Photoshop. With the first one being, always work in 16-bit. Even if you export it in 8-bit, work in 16-bit. Here's why. So here's a simple gradient from dark blue to a little bit lighter blue. So if we create a curves adjustment layer, keep in mind, this is 8-bit right here. If we go a little bit extreme like this, you can clearly see the banding right here. Now it is 8-bit at the moment. As soon as we change it to 16-bit by going to image, mode, 16 bits per channel, have a look, it goes away. I don't know how YouTube is compressing this video, but you can see the difference and you get the point. So when you're working with 8-bit and start to stack up these adjustments, if you have a lot of smooth transitions in your image, it is very likely that it can create banding like this. That is why I recommend work in 16-bit if you're concerned about banding and if your image has a lot of those smooth transitions. The second thing to keep in mind is that banding always happens in areas that have lesser details and smoother transitions. For example, right here where the mountain is, you cannot see any banding, but right here in the sky, you can see the banding because there is not much detail and the transition is smoother. So to remove it, we can blur it. But if we simply blur it, by the way, first of all, this is 8-bit. Let us first change it to image mode 16 bits per channel. So if we simply blur it by going to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur, everything is going to be blurred. Right here, the banding is being fixed, but we are losing details in the mountains as well. So how can we selectively apply blur where we can apply blur in the less detailed areas and not apply blur in the more detailed areas? There is a blur like that and we call it surface blur. For it, for the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J. Then go to filter, convert for smart filter so that we can change the blur amount later. Now zoom into an area, go to filter again, blur and this time let us choose surface blur. Now these are at the exact same settings that I wanted because I was practicing before. Yes, I do practice too. Anyway, let us increase the threshold all the way to the right hand side first and then decrease the radius. Then slowly and gradually increase the radius and stop at the point where the banding goes away. You can even zoom out a little bit to check all throughout. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and slowly and gradually increase the radius. So at about, I feel, at about 40, most of the banding does go away, especially from around the edges. Now let us decrease the threshold so that the banding doesn't come back, but all of these details do. So if we decrease it too much, even the banding comes back a little bit. As you can see, a little bit lines here and there. So right here, you can see the banding too. So play with this number, see what works best. So I guess maybe 9 or 10, or possibly we can even get it to 8. Let's zoom out and see if we do have any banding. We have some banding here, but that's fine most of it is gone and we have all the details too. Hit OK. But there is of course a limitation to this technique. It also blurs out a lot of other detailed areas. So here's the before and here is the after. We didn't want to add all that softness all throughout. We only wanted it on the sky. So hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the Mask button to create a negative mask so that we can paint on areas where we do want it. Let us take the brush, make sure it's a soft round brush with white as the foreground color just roughly paint over the sky and you can even dig in to the edge a little bit. And that is the advantage of surface blur. There you go. See, the details are not being harmed as much. And now you can paint the entire thing. By the way, you want to make sure you painted it all. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask to view it. And you want to make sure everything is properly filled in. I'm so sorry about the construction in the background. My neighbors... I don't know what they're building. That is definitely causing banding in my head. Anyway, when you zoom out, you do see some signs of banding in the sky. For that, we would need some extreme blur. Since we have taken care of the edges, we can go a bit heavy-handed. Press Q for the quick mask mode and you can make a selection using whatever method you please. I'm going to choose a soft round brush and just going to paint this area. Right now, we are in the quick mask mode. You want to make sure the smoothness is smoothing actually is zero. Stay away from the edges. Stay very much away from the edges, like this, and fill up the entire thing. Maybe you can go a bit closer like that. That is fine. Now press Q again to turn that into a selection. Now we wanted to select the sky. This is just the opposite. So press Control Shift I, Command Shift I to invert 
the selection. Now with this layer selected, you can press Ctrl or Command J and simply blur the area. First again, do not forget, go to filter, convert for smart filters so that you can change the values later. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. A value of 72 already looks good, but slowly and gradually increase it to the point where it goes away. And of course, it would be 72 because I applied it before or 70 works too. Hit OK and there you go, properly gone. But there's a problem with that. And that brings us to the third thing we need to keep in mind. And that is we cannot leave it this smooth. It just doesn't look realistic. We need to have some kind of texture, some kind of grain. So now you have the option to add a little bit of grain just on that area or all throughout the image. It's your call. For this example, we are just going to press Control Shift N, Command Shift N. The new layer dialog box will show up. Change the blend mode to overlay. Now keep in mind, you need to check fill with overlay neutral color. Hit OK. This will create a layer with gray in it. Now since overlay is a blend mode which hides everything that is 50% gray, you don't see anything right here. If it were normal, you would see this. Anyway, let us change it back to overlay. And before we apply any filter, let us not forget again, Go to filter, convert for smart filters. You can also right click, convert to smart object, same thing. I've even made a keyboard shortcut for it and we talked about it in this video. Anyway, back to this one. Let's go to filter, noise and add noise. Let us go for not so high, eight. You can choose uniform or Gaussian, that's up to you. I'm gonna choose Gaussian monochromatic, that is important, hit okay. But now there is a problem. The noise is way too sharp. If you like it this way, you can keep it this way, but I'm gonna go to filter again, blur and then Gaussian blur again. And for this one, add about 0.8 or 0.6% blur, pixel blur and hit OK. The noise is so much better and I love the texture in there, but it is too much. So let us decrease the opacity and just add a little bit of it. How about 32? Let's keep it 32. This is slightly little texture, looks good all throughout the image. I love the effect of it. Now let us zoom out and let's take a look at the before and after. So here is the before and here is the after. By the way, just to do a little bit of promotion, if you have the Piximperfect compositing panel, you can open up the structures section and create a grain from there directly. So let us turn it off and click on the plus button it already creates a grain layer. And the best part is it is adjustable. You can adjust the size of the grain from right here. You can not, sorry, the amount of grain, the size of the grain from right here, the irregularity from right here, everything is adjustable. You can even control whether you want the grain in the highlights or not. So if the blend if is all the way to the right hand side, the grain is applied all throughout. But if the blend if is all the way to the left hand side, the grain is more applied in the shadows and less on the highlights. As you can see, less on the highlights and more on the dark areas. So you have all that flexibility with Piximperfect compositing panel. Please do check it out. The links are in the description. So there you go. The three things we need to keep in mind to fix and avoid banding in Photoshop. The first thing is always work in 16-bit if you're concerned about banding. The second thing is banding is something you usually see in areas with lesser details with smoother transitions. So find a way to apply blur so that the areas with details are not affected and the areas with smoother transitions are affected. And for it, you can apply surface blur and further masking. If you need to blur more, you can use masking and Gaussian blur. The third thing is don't leave it completely smooth. Add a bit of texture. It can be anything. In this case, we added some grain. If it's a backdrop of a model, you can add some concrete texture. You can add some stones. That's up to you. It's your creativity. So that's all there is for this video. I hope it helped. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. We're up here on